Installing DNS In order to have a DNS server running on Windows 2008, the first thing we're going to need to do is to install it since DNS isn't included in a default installation of Windows 2008. Now most likely you're either going to be installing a DNS server on a server by itself, or you'll be installing it on the same server as your domain controllers. In fact, it's most likely that you'll be installing DNS on a domain controller since you can then take advantage of the additional security provided with Active Directory Integrated Zones, something which we'll talk more about in another video. So in this video we'll see how we can manually install the DNS server role by itself, since installing DNS on an Active Directory domain controller is as simple as checking a box when you install Active Directory domain services. So to install DNS, we'll fire up the server manager by clicking on the little grey icon here next to our start button. Then in the left hand side, we'll select roles. And in the right hand side, we'll click on the add role hyperlink. Now this is going to start up the add role wizard, so we'll click next. And then we'll choose a DNS server, and we'll click next again. And then we'll get a little bit of information here about DNS and also Active Directory. And you can go ahead and read that if you like, but we'll just click Next and then Install. Now even though it's pretty quick to install the DNS role, rather than have you waiting around watching the progress bar, I'm going to pause the video here and we'll return once the installation is complete. Alright, well our installation is complete, so we'll click on Close. And now if we click on Start and go to Administrative Tools, we've got a new DNS console here, so if we start that up, and then expand our server, DCO2. And you'll notice that on the left hand side, if we select forward lookup zones, reverse lookup zones, or conditional forwarders, all of these are empty. However, you might recall in our introduction to DNS video, we talked about root hints. So if we click on our server, DCO2, and then double click on root hints, you'll notice here that the 13 root servers are already configured, and this is what lets us use our server here as a DNS server right out of the box. So let's test our DNS server here. So we'll click on start, we'll open up a command prompt, and we'll go and try and ping a host out on the internet. So let's try and ping uh, yahoo.com. And we'll hit enter. All right, and we can see that we're getting response. So why is that? We haven't created any zones or any forwarders, so how did our new DNS server find the IP address of Yahoo's website? Well, when we installed the DNS server role on this server, it automatically created those root hints that we just saw. So our server knows where to find those root servers, and at the moment that's all it knows. But technically, that's all our DNS server needs to begin resolving names on the internet. So to find out that Yahoo's web server was at this IP address here, our DNS server simply went to the root servers and asked for the DNS server for Yahoo. It was told to go to the .com servers, which it did, and then it found the DNS servers for Yahoo. So it then sent a request to the Yahoo's DNS servers and said, hey, what's the IP address for your web server? The DNS server at Yahoo has told our DNS server the IP address for their web server, so our DNS server has cached that information, it's passed it back to the DNS client on this machine, which also cached it, and then our ping of the website succeeded. So there's the power of the root hints file in action. Now I'll also point out that the root hints file can also be located in your Windows System 32 DNS directory. So if we go and click on Start, and we'll open up our computer here, and we'll go to our C drive, followed by our Windows directory, and we'll scroll down and select our System 32 directory, followed by DNS, now if we double click on this file here, cache.dns, and we'll choose to open that up with Notepad. If we expand this, down here you're going to see all of the root servers listed. But I will also add that whilst I've just shown you this file, the likelihood of you ever needing to actually modify it is pretty close to none in most cases, but it's worth knowing about it anyway. So let's close this file, and we'll close Windows Explorer, and we'll go and take a closer look into DNS, and we'll capture some packets, and we'll see what it can tell us what our DNS server is doing. So we're going to use Microsoft's Network Monitor for this, which is a free download from Microsoft's website. 
So if I go and drop down to my desktop, you can see I've already installed that application. So we'll double click on it to start it up. But I'm also going to quickly switch back to our command prompt here. And we're going to type in ipconfig slash flush DNS. And that'll clear our client DNS cache. And then we'll go back to our DNS console and we'll right click on our server DCO2 and we'll choose to clear the cache here. That way we can be sure that our DNS server is basically back to square one and it knows nothing except the IP addresses of the root DNS servers. So we'll go to our network monitor application and we'll click on this button here to create a new capture tab. And then we'll click on the start icon, which is this little green play icon here. All right, now we're capturing traffic. So let's go back to our command prompt and we'll ping another host. And let's use Dell's website as an example. Now, it doesn't really matter whether we actually get a response here or not, which we obviously are. As long as we see an IP address here, that's good enough for me. All right, well, our ping was successful. So let's go and stop our capture by clicking on the stop button here. And in the middle part of this window, you can see a lot of traffic going back and forth. Now, since we have such a small area to work with, I'm just gonna close a few of these other windows here. We'll get rid of them so we've got a little bit more room to work with. Now, let's scroll down a bit. And we'll be looking for this server, which is 10.32.0.3 sending out a DNS packet to some sort of foreign machine. So here we can see that our server has sent a DNS query to this server here, and that's definitely outside our network. And if we scroll across, we can see that it's a query for Dell.com. And this server here is one of our root servers. So if we expand this window here, and I'm just gonna close our hex details window so we can see the frame details a little bit better. Under our DNS query ID, if we expand that and then expand Q record, down here you can see that this indeed was a request for the Dell website. So back at the top here, a little bit further down, we can see that we received a reply. And if we highlight this in the bottom here under the frame details, if we scroll down, you can see that it sent back to us a list of all of the DNS servers for Dell's website. So here under the frame summary, the next frame is that our server has then gone and approached the name server at Dell because it now knows where to find it. And of course, it's asked for the web server. So if we scroll back over here, we can see down here that that name server has replied to us with a successful response. And down the bottom here, if we scroll down, we can see that inside this response, it's given us a list of other DNS servers that we should go and contact to get a response for the web server. And you'll note down here, we've got ozpc 3 dns 3 which of course, our computer has then gone to contact. And if we scroll over, we can see that it's asked for the web server www.ins.dell.com. And in our next frame here, if we scroll down, that DNS server has responded to us. And if we expand this A record out, it's come back and it's told us that the IP address for that web server is 143.166.224.244. So let's go back to our command prompt. And we can see here that our ping that was successful was for 144, which is correct, 166.224.244. So we've just seen the process by which our DNS server successfully resolved the IP address of Dell's web server. Now, any subsequent pings to another .com address won't need to go back to the root servers since our DNS server here now already knows the IP address of the .com servers and it's cached them locally. So it's gonna go straight to those .com servers to locate the DNS servers for another site such as Microsoft.com or Winstructor.com. So as we've seen in this video, installing DNS is pretty simple and straight away, we can begin resolving IP addresses right out of the box, thanks to the included root hints, which is simply a list of IP addresses of the root servers. We also saw actual packets going back and forth to get a real behind the scenes look at how DNS resolution works. And later on in this DNS video series, we're gonna see more of this in action. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.